again. I saw you in there, playing with that cat. He just went in for a second. He's been out here all afternoon working on his French. Really? How could I do my algebra? I think we both had on algebra. How did I do? How do you always do? Brilliant. <laughs> you might have used the subjunctive here. Where? This is Van Dan. May I try on your coat, Anne? Of course you may. My father gave me this coat the year before he died. He always bought the best money to buy. Did you have a lot of boyfriends before you were married? And it's not courteous to ask personal questions. Why not? I always had a throng of admirers who couldn't keep their eyes off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Our house is always swarming with boys. I, I remember the summer when I was 16. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> Who's talking to you? We had a big house in Brimmer Haven. Oh, those boys came buzzing like bees around a honeypot. <laughs> My father gets so worried with all those boys buzzing around. He'd say, if any one of them tries to get fresh, you just tell them, remember, Mr. So-and-so. Remember, I'm a lady. Remember, Mr. So-and-so. Remember, I'm a lady. Very good. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> You guys write about that, it's so important all the time. How much does a 13 year old have to say? Just because someone's young doesn't mean she doesn't have anything to say, Mr. Mendel. Please, can't I have any privacy? Petronella, could you please tell me what could possibly be so private? Oh, you know how it is at that age, pretty. Everything's private, even brushing your teeth. I just hope she's not writing anything about me in that diary of hers. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Really, Putty, you're so childish sometimes. <laughs> Still haven't finished your French? You ought to be ashamed. I know, I know. A hopeless case. You are not hopeless. He's not hopeless. He just doesn't have anyone to help him, like the girls do. Perhaps you could, Mr. French. I'm sure his father... Not me. He won't listen to me. What do you say, Peter? Oh, Mr. Frank, you're an angel. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't get you before I met that one over there. <laughs> Come, Peter, show me which chapter you're on. You listen to Mr. Frank, Peter. Mr. Frank is a highly educated man. <laughs> Aren't things hard enough without you sprawling all over the place? You didn't smoke so much, you wouldn't be so ill-tempered. Am I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Don't tell me you used up all those cigarettes. One package. We only brought one package. You're smoking up all our money. You shut up! What are you staring at? I've never heard grown-ups quarrel before. I thought only children quarreled. And it wore off when you grew up. This isn't a quarrel. It's a discussion. And I've never heard children so rude before. Rude? Me? I don't know how you stand up here. Would you please bring me my ditty? I must remember to ask for the poor bowl. I have a library book for her to return, and I need some hairpins and soap. Please, me, get me some starch, some tea, some biscuits, a movie star magazine. Tell us all the latest news, me. Me, me, me. It's a wonder we've had a life of her own. Do you know she's engaged to someone called Jan? She's crazy about him. I'm terrified the Nazis will take him to work in a war plant in Germany. That's what they do with all young Dutchmen these days. They pick them up in the street Suppose and Suppose you try keeping still for five minutes. And dear, come have your milk. Talk, talk, talk. Chatter, chatter, chatter. It's a wonder we haven't been discovered and shot. Why didn't you show off the time? Can't you be quiet? I'm your sister Margo. Be a good girl. Not me. I'm going to be remarkable. I'm going to Paris. Really? You'll see. I'm going to be a famous writer, or singer, or a 